everyone, good evening. Welcome to Friday Nights with Emma. I uh, hope everybody's okay this evening. Happy Valentine's Day! It's Valentine's Day, yay! Hope everybody got lots of nice flowers and chocolates or treated yourself, if that's the case. I, yeah, I did get a nice plant. Um, but yeah, welcome, welcome. Again, as always, if you lose me, which he knows now, he doesn't play video games on a Friday night, but if you do lose me, just hit the refresh and the video will come back up again. Hi Sharon, hi. Yeah, so just let me know you're there. I saw a couple of hearts and, and some uh, thumbs up. So yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for spending tonight with me. I won't keep you guys too long, so I know you've got some hot dates to go back to. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do something really fun, which I actually, I was pleasantly surprised by how this came out this week because I've never done this before actually. I thought, oh, this would be a good idea. But then I, when it actually came out of the dryer all done, I was like, oh, that actually worked really well. So, oh, hi, Carol. Hi, Helen. Hi, Terry. Hi, Maggie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Libby. Hello. Hi, Alan. Hi. Um, oh, one thing to I want to say first before we get too far into it. Going back to last week when we did, oh, I did, sorry, I'm getting a bit close for you guys. Um, the Foundation by the Yard. So New York Beauty panels will be back in because we got completely sold out uh, and the supplier doesn't have any either. So it's going to be, it said it'd be about six weeks before it comes in. So it'll be the end of March when we get more of these in, then we'll have lots more for you. Um, hi, Anna. Hi, Joanne. So that's that. And then what I did get in is the add a quarter of an inch rulers, which was quite exciting. So I've got two sizes. I've got the six inch, which is really handy for the New York Beauty, actually, and a 12 inch one which would be good for if you're doing much bigger pieces of um, foundation piecing in general. Now, just to show you quickly. Oh, hi, Joan. How? Because I was I have used these before, but I did just go over it again tonight just to refresh. And so these are handy because hi, Judith. Um, you can use them in two ways. So I've got my foundation panel started and I'm at the point where this is obviously this piece is going to be too big so I need to do the folding and the cutting so what you do is you can see this this line right here is a line that I need to cut this fabric the fabric the purple fabric underneath a quarter inch bigger than so what you do is you take your numbered side of your ruler and you lay it you lay it flat obviously not because I'm just being awkward and just showing you this way uh, lay it against that line you fold it, your fabric over like that or your paper whichever way oh, hi Diane hi Brenda so now you've got a nice fold right where that seam line is and then using your quarter of an inch now if you see there's a little it has a little um it's kind of hard to see it's got a little ridge there and a, a quarter of an inch is the ridge and then you can just line that ridge up to that line and you cut along the top basically and that gives you an exact quarter of an inch and then it helps you line it up better so that's that so that's those um hi lorraine hi leslie hi belinda hi margaret hi diane what are we doing today rag quilts <clears throat> yeah so this is what this is just my sample piece but this is what it came out like which i was really excited because i have seen these done before i haven't done one myself um and i've i have to admit i've been kind of put off trying them because they always looked a bit bulky and a bit stiff but this one i've you i've done using the brush cotton flannel and um cotton wadding in it and it is if you look look how drapey that is it's like ridiculously like soft and drapey and yeah i've got some lovely baby flannels so um come on baby yeah they're baby flannels there's some some baby prints on there some little elephants and some little lions and some pastel colors things like that which would be beautiful for this because look how fluffy 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 that all comes up you just want to sit there and play with it which link clearly clearly liked it 
So what I've done here, I've got some of the, um, I guess you call them manly colours. So I've got a plain uh, flannel, plain side flannel. So I've got the blue and then the red. So the red, I kind of tried to do checkerboard, but I wasn't really paying attention. So clearly years went off, but hey, that's the way it goes. And I've got this green, which there are several colours of it, but this green is what's called it, well, they call it a Shetland flannel. And if you look, it's got strands, you see strands of yellow and green woven into itself. So it's a little bit like, kind of like a Tweedy, I guess, because you've got two different um, colour threads going through there. But look how cool it looks when that yellow comes through on the, um, the edges. So how do we do it? Super, super easy. And actually, with half term coming up next week, if you've got any kids at home or grandkids, which I'm sure nobody, nobody there is old enough to have grandkids, right? Um, this would be so much, so easy for them to do because there's absolutely no ironing. Um, you can, if you want to do the rotary cutting to cut all the squares at first, you can, or you can actually just get a square, make a square out of some cereal card box, cereal box cardboard to make a template and have the kids draw it on some, you know, you can use some scrap fabric or you could go completely sustainable and you could um, use some flannel shirts, old flannel shirts or old flannel sheets would work, anything like that. And then they can just trace it out and then just cut them with scissors. But if you want to do the quick way, so what you need, oh, hi Shirley, hi Christina squares now i have gone for six inch squares of my flannel because one thing i was afraid of is if i went smaller i was afraid that it would end up with quite a lot of this chenilling effect and it would be again i wanted to avoid that thick bulk so i've gone with the six inches oh hi julie oh this is, <laughs> wish you were young enough not to have grandchildren but my little grandson ah yay um, hi Helen. Oh, could you use old denim jeans? Possibly. What I would do is do a little test patch. So do some smaller squares, um, say three or four inches, and do a little nine patch like I've done here, just to test it out, uh, just to see how it, it would work on the fabric you want to use. Oh, hi Dawn. Right, so getting back to the actual matter at hand. Six inch squares. So you've got six inch squares of your fabric. And then I've got squares of wadding. So you, it actually, you quilt it all at the same time. So it all goes together all at the same time, which is really nice. Now I started off with five inch squares of wadding. So leaving me half an inch around all the way around. But I was afraid, but when I put them, when I first started putting them together, that if you didn't get the wadding quite in the middle or you hadn't cut it quite right um, you might see you might get some bits of wadding coming up through your seams so i've actually oh extra bit of that thread i've actually gone uh four and a half and it worked really well because i've got the wadding in the middle of my square where i need it but on my edges there it's a little bit loose so that my where my seams are again it reduces that bulk because it's just two layers of fabric along those seams rather than fab two layers of fabric and wadding and all of that felting so i think it worked out really well i think that helps with the drape so four and a half inch squares of wadding any kind of wadding um you can mix and match if you've got different types so say cotton and or poly cotton now if you do do that um, you may see different results. Oh, hi Sue. Just because of the shrinkage. So with wadding, just like fabric, when you wash it, it will shrink a little bit. Now, 80% cotton, 20% polyester, the 80-20 one, won't shrink quite as much as 100% cotton. So you might get, if you use different wadding in different squares, you might see a little bit of a difference. Same with polyester. So if you can, even if it's not from the same actual piece of wadding, so long as it's the same composition, it'll work. Now, because you only need four and a half inch squares, 
you can get these from all of that scrap wadding that you get from your cutting trimming back your quilts after you've quilted them so all of that spare wadding that either you'd piece together to make a patchwork piece of wadding to make a smaller quilt or you'd put away thinking oh, i can use that for you know placemats or whatever you can use them to make another quilt just like this so what we're going to do i've got one square of fabric put my wadding in the middle now it doesn't have to be exact just has to be roughly in the middle but if you are the kind of person that like oh no that has to be in the middle what you can do is make yourself a little template so make a little six inch template of a square so your serial cardboard again six inches square and then cut out the middle to four and a half inches so then your outside would be what three quarters of an inch all the way around it'd be three quarters of an inch broad all the way around does that make sense and then you can use that to make sure that your wadding is positioned in the middle but again this is a very easy very forgiving quilt so i've got my red i've layered up my wadding in the middle of my red now i'm layering up my green on the top now you can use two colors exactly the same you can use two different colors you can use flannel on one side maybe calico on the other or two different types of cotton because it does work with just regular cotton as well what you're looking for in the fabric that you're using you want something that's quite what we call sheddy so it, see how my threads are coming off already those kind of fabrics are really perfect for this so if you've got some fabric that you're like oh i really don't like working with that with regular um, patchwork they'll work really well for this now i've got walking foot on my sewing machine and if you can see it's my, my walking foot i've increased my stitches to about three just so it goes through easier you don't have to but it does make it go through a little bit easier when you've got lots of layers and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from corner to corner and corner to corner. So I'll just do that for you. Now I'm going to show you because this will go really quick. You can actually chain piece. So if I show you the finished article, what we're aiming for. So that's what we're aiming for. So directly through the middle. Again, I've just eyeballed this from corner to corner it doesn't really matter but if you are the type of person that we would it would annoy you if it wasn't exact then by all means draw your lines before you sew it so you've got a nice guide now to make it go quicker so i've layered up my first one i'm going to sew from corner to corner let me see if i can't angle you guys so you can see ah there that's a little bit better you won't be able to see me but you can see my hands at least so hold my stress So I've done that, but my, you'll see, my squares have shifted a little bit. They're not exactly on top of each other anymore. They're out by about, I'd say about an eighth of an inch. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Because we're going to trim those edges. It's not going to be the end of the world. Oh, hi, Susan. So I'm just going to layer up another one just to show you that it goes really quick if you chain piece these. That out a little bit. <clears throat> there. So I've just done two. But if you wanted to carry on. If you wanted to carry on and do all of your squares at the same time, you'd end up with a chain, obviously, of squares. <coughs> now we just need to do the other side. It's 
one. Do a second one. <coughs> just to show you how quick these are to put together so I've now got two sandwich squares with a sew line all the way down the middle diagonally now the reason that we do that is purely to make sure that wadding doesn't shift uh, once you've put your quilt together so it's there just to stabilize your wadding uh, square basically oh, hi, um, oh rag quilt yeah okay just to show you how quickly those go I did this stack literally in the maybe 10 or 15 minutes that I was just sitting waiting for eight o'clock to come around. So how many have I got here? These aren't quite done because I got caught short. So those are only done one way rather than both ways. But I've got, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, just in the, that 10 minutes. So once you've cut up all your fabric, and your wadding it goes really quick to put together so we've got our squares now we need to sew them together so i'm gonna do i'm gonna actually put these into a quilt eventually so i'm gonna do them a little bit different from my test square i'm gonna have the red on the side where my seams are frayed and then the blue on the other side so i'm basically going to do it opposite to this <clears throat> so, I'm just going to take two squares, line them up, just like we would for normal patchwork. You don't have to pin, and then you're going to sew them directly along there, but you're going to use a half an inch seam allowance. Oh, hi Shelley, what's this? Does a walking foot stop the machine chewing your corners? No. I'll tell you what a walking foot does because I use it when I'm sewing jersey as well. The walking foot, because it's got it's a, basically a box and an arm and it has some feed dogs basically that go like this, right? You've got feed dogs and the bottom of your machine. So um, the feed dogs normally run like this with your flat foot just straight. So when you're normal stitching, your feed dogs feed your fabrics through on the bottom. What the walking foot does is it mimics exactly what the feed dogs on the bottom does. So you've got feed dogs on the top, so your fabric is getting moved together, the top layer and the bottom layer move together at the same time. When you're quilting, because you've got lots of layers, that walking foot is gonna help to feed that top layer through at the same speed as the bottom layer so you don't have it rucking up or it being basically your top piece of fabric doesn't lag behind your bottom one um, when jersey when you sew jersey it also helps that because that's really important now having said that when you don't use a walking foot and you just do your piecing as normal and you've got that flat foot steady and then your feed dogs move on the bottom you can actually use that to your advantage sometimes so if you ever get um, two pieces of patchwork and one piece is longer than the other so I'm going to pretend here so usually if you match your pieces up and you'll be able to tell because one side you can see one side will smile at you so you, you're matching up your corners where they ought to be matched, but one piece of fabric is longer than the other and there's a little smile. If you put that smile, as long as it's not too big, if you put that smile underneath as you're sewing, those feed dogs will actually feed that piece of fabric through a little bit quicker than the top. And what it does is it helps to even out that extra little bit of length. So that's one of the tricks to getting accurate piecing is if you ever have that, Put that longer piece underneath and it will help uh, move it through quicker so, so oh sorry i'm um, missing a way oh stop me yes yeah, stop chewing corners either what i always do is hold my threads so if you can see i just hold my threads or use a donkey which have i got a scrap yeah 
donkey is just a scrap of fabric I actually fold it over so that it's doubled and then I sew through that first once I've sewn through to the end of it I leave it in place and then start sewing my next bit and that does exactly the same thing as me holding on like I'm holding on to the threads oh hi Sheila um hi Joanne hi Sonia oh good perfect good glad you like that good that tip so going back to what we were doing where was I gotta get my blue okay so I want my make sure I want I get it on the right side so I want my red to be this way for me you guys choose what you want but for me I want my red to be this side so that all my ruffled edges are going to be on this side so I'm going to sew half an inch all the way from end to end there we go I'm going to do one more let's see yeah this way because then I can show you the corners oh hi mum hi Shirley literally just like that see the seams on this top same here now what you would do is you continue sewing these so that you've got a whole strip so maybe I'll do that actually we can pretend that we're doing our whole quilt so what I'll what my quilt will actually eventually be size wise is I've got it written down 40 inches by 50 inches and to do that I'm going to have eight squares going across so this will be four I want this plus another four to make my strip going across for my width and then I'll have ten of those strips there'll be eight squares going across and ten squares going down so you have 88 squares all together on one side so oh, I'll have to do math so is that 176 squares in total? Hopefully, does that make sense? Okay, so I've got a strip of of four squares you continue to you've got eight in a row just like that um let's see so i've got some questions hi helen what seam allowance half an inch use half an inch seam allowance half an inch for this one let's see um where's my i don't have a i don't think you'd be able to see on this one well maybe so half an inch half an inch seam allowance yeah yeah half an inch reason you write half an inch well when you're generally using brush cotton flannel in a quilt they do recommend that in general you use a half an inch seam allowance even if you're just doing regular patchwork with it just because it frays a lot more than normal cotton so even if you were going to use this in a patchwork, which I, I've done sometimes, although I don't think I added half an inch because I mi had a mixture of brush cotton and regular cotton. Um, but yeah, if you're doing it all um, flannel, half an inch seam allowance is generally the rule. Right, so I've got that. I'm just going to do one more just like that so then we can sew them together. So I want to show you sewing them together. And then we're going to trim cut 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 oh yes if you do have little children's coming to visit next week during half term the cutting 
will be a very good job for them because it does make your, your hand hurt. So best to let the little hands deal with that. I'll make sure that I'm not missing anybody. Yeah, half an inch. Thank you. Just joined. Oh, hi, Terry. Oh, oh, this is like the gorgeous heart one you posted earlier. Similar. The rag quilt is similar in that um, you you fray the edges. The chenille one that I did, the chenille heart, that will be a different a different thing. So I'll have to do that a different time. Let me see. Make sure I get in this the right way. Right way. That way. That way. Yeah. Um, very similar techniques where you, you have to layer up fabric and expose the cut edges basically. So I've got one, two, so I'll put these together and I'll have two strips with four squares each. So make sure I'm, I am, <laughs> I love a bit of child labour. Yeah, well, you know, back in the day we used to have to do it, right? So it's only fair. Oh no, my thread came loose. Sorry, bear with me. Got to do a bit of re-threading. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. That's what's lined up. Okay, now comes the interesting bit. So we're going to sew this strip and this strip together. Well, I'm, you have to make sure that when, when they've sewn together that your seam allowances are going to be all on the same side. That is one important thing. Now the corners, you can just nest the seams as you normally would. So press one, one finger press literally push one to one side, one to the other. So you can see there's a nesting and you just go straight across them. It doesn't matter if they don't quite match because as you can see, the corners are all hidden. So you don't have to worry about it. So here we go. Now you wouldn't do this step that I'm going to show you next until you've got all of your squares put together. So I'm going to show you obviously. So that's my all my seam allowances on the front. That's my back. Everything neat and hidden. Now normally what you would do once you've sewn all of your squares together just like that what you then need to do is sew a half an inch seam allowance all the way around the edge of your quilt. So all these raw edges right here, 
you need a half an inch you just need to sew half an inch let's see if you can see on this one i've done yeah you can see right here see how i've just sewn a half an inch in all the way around just to finish off that edge so you do that and then this is where the child labor bit comes in you have to snip these seam allowances so the closer they are snipped together so if you did them a quarter of an inch apart that would be ideal or so so you don't want to go let me show you so if you can see where's my light i don't have a light i don't have a light i think you can see it better here ah there we go that's better so you can see I've trimmed it down almost to the stitching, not quite. You don't, you don't want to cut through your stitching is the main thing. You can cut as close to it as you can without actually cutting through your, your stitching. Um, maybe a millimetre or two above it, that's fine. But yeah, that's what you want to do to all of your seam allowances. And all the way around the edge as well. So where you've sewn it around the edge, you want to do that. Now, when it gets to these corners, because you can see they're all, you know, sewn over. What I did there is I just cut them, snipped them the same. So I've just snipped them so that they're, they're free and on this side as well. So you can see that side is still sewn down. you can just trim it like that you do get a little bit that gets stuck down but once it's all finished you don't see that and how you get to this point is continue trimming everything just like that and then you put it in the washing machine with something heavy or just regular washing machine regular wash put it through if you've got a tumble dryer, best to put it through the tumble dryer. But once you get it out of the washing machine, it should already be quite ruffled. If you don't have a tumble dryer, I'd maybe put it through the wash a couple of times. The more you wash it, the more that's all going to be ruffled up. But this is what, yeah, this was through the wash and through the tumble dry. And then Link really liked it as well. Hi, Joanne. Oh, see it better. Yeah, see it better on the green. Yeah, the little clipping. Oh, hi, Laurie. How are you? So, yeah, so that's that. Any questions? Any questions? Because that's super, super easy. I'm going to continue with that because oh, it's so soft. So soft. And, uh, yeah, so I, I'm definitely a fan. Definitely a fan. And it's so easy to do. And it's all quilted. You don't have to bind it. I mean, come on. Come on. What's not to love? Oh, hi Joanne. Oh, love the red and the oh yeah, red and the green for a Christmas quilt. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I've got some lovely, lovely um turquoisey. This Shetland flannel, in a, in a lovely turquoise, and a lovely russet coloured came in as well. So yeah, lots to choose from. Oh, hi Laurie, doing okay. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Hi Belinda. Didn't this, oh, didn't this block up? <laughs> it didn't block up the wash machine, but when I opened the dryer, there was a lot of little yellow bits of thread all over the inside of my dryer. But yeah, wasn't too bad. <laughs> On cool in the dryer? Hi, Don. Um, uh, <laughs> I think it was warm. So my, my tumble dryer is weird. It doesn't really have heat settings. It just has cotton or wool or whatever it is. So I just put it onto the one that I always put it on. And yeah, I think it's, it's warm. It's a warm tumble dryer. Oh, Margaret, how much of the fabric do you require? Great question. Okay, I can tell you exactly. <clears throat> so in total, for front and back, you will need two, um, five meters of fabric in total. So that's for all of your, that encompasses all of your squares. So 
a mixture of whatever you want, but a total of five meters. So what did I, I said, so you need two and a half meters for the front, two and a half meters for the back. So if you wanted to do just two colors, I've done three, what you could do is uh, two and a half meters of each or what I've done. So two, I've done two and a half meters of the green and then it'll be one and a quarter of the blue and one and a quarter of the red to make up my two and a half because that's all mixed and matched. Oh, and then for the wadding, obviously if you've got scraps left over from where you've had things or you, you quilted your quilts, perfect. If you need to buy it, and if you buy it by the meter, I worked out that if it's 90 inches wide, you'll need a meter, which sounds a lot, but maybe I was working on the five inches. I can't remember. But in any case, you're going to need 88, only 88 squares of the wadding. And then 176, is that right? Of the squares all together. So yeah, good, perfect. So that's that. Now, after I saw this come out of the washing machine, weirdly, because I, I tend to get really well, a lot of ideas in the shower, I don't know why. Yesterday when I was in the shower, this idea popped into my head. So I actually did this literally the minute I woke up this morning, I did this and finished it. So this is chenille. This is the chenille. Although I have to admit, it was the design is exactly how I imagined it. But I think if I did it again, I wouldn't do the lines in the middle of the heart because this side of the heart gets a little bit lost. But another heart in the middle. Plus, I've got some other design ideas as well. But yeah, this rainbow effect of the fabric. Yeah, that was a bit of a brainwave in the shower yesterday. So hopefully you liked it. And Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, so that's that one. Oh, questions. Helen, would old, would old flannel shirts? Yes, would be fabulous old flannel, definitely. <clears throat> definitely think this is a really good, this rag quilt is definitely a good upcycling project for your scrap wadding, uh, shirts, um, sheets, anything like that. But, oh man, this fabric is so nice. Yeah, so I'm going to finish mine in that, definitely. Oh, hi Lorraine, thank you so much for this. Oh, you're so, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So glad you liked it. Hi, Jackie. Oh, something else on your list. Good, good, good. I will talk all about it at the first Saturday of the month. Yeah. Oh, hi, Kathleen. Yeah, so this, this one will likely be a workshop at some point in the year. So that one was really fun. Really like that. This was all scissors as well. You can get a cutter for the chenille, but I actually ended up just using my scissors because my chenille cutter, I've used it for other things and the blade was completely dull. So it was a very hard snip snip job this morning. Could have used a child for that. Don't have one. So, okay. Well, I'll let you go back to your hot dates. And hopefully you enjoyed that and I'd love to see pictures of your rag quilts. Um, probably next week I'll go back to talking about some temperature quilts now that we're getting to the end. Well, we've had one month over, we're halfway through another one. Oh, hi Sarah. What about baby grows? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know if Jersey would work as well because Jersey doesn't tend to fray as much. I mean, it, it would definitely work pretty well. I just don't think it would knit as much, but definitely worth doing a test on. Oh, maybe you can, Sarah, you can get Anushka to do a test patch on some baby grows and see how it works. So. Oh, hi, Em. Uh, do you know if you're going to be on Sewing Street? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, lots of things in the pipelines, but yeah, you guys will all hear about them once everything's finalised. So yeah, yeah. Didn't, but didn't Vix do well? Oh, I watched it like Vicky. It was so good to see Vicky back on and Victoria. And yeah, so can't wait to see that again. Oh, let's see Laurie. Will I be at the... Oh, yes. I will be at the Stitch Festival. I will be there on the 28th. 
not as an exhibitor or anything, but just an actual have a day off and do something fun. Yeah, that's what I'll be doing. So yeah, let me know, text me and then maybe we can catch up and have a coffee or say hi or something. Oh, you guys are going too quick for me. Can I go down? Can I go down? Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, you're welcome, Joanne. Oh, hi, Sharon. Oh, I had that question. Don't know yet. Nothing's been finalised, so we've got lots of things, exciting things coming up. So once everything's finalised, everybody will get to know about it, for sure. Um, oh, what's happening the first Saturday of each month? Well then, now that I can tell you about, Sonia. So I already do uh, a block of the month class every first Saturday of the month. Um, but that's going to continue and more so i'll probably tell you all about it because i still need to finalize some things next week yes remind me next friday ask me again about the first saturday each month because that's something i need to yeah and especially if you live in the peterborough area definitely oh have a good weekend margaret thanks thanks for watching um doo -doo -doo -doo. oh 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 go back you guys went away. There we go. Oh, no. The wrong button. Darn it. Okay. Oh, thanks, Maggie. Glad you liked it. Oh, no. Oh, Laura, you're on the 29th. We missed you. There. I, I can tell you what it was like on, on Friday. I think it would be great. So, okay. I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great Valentine's Day evening. And I will see you next week. So, bye.